हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दी शॉर्ट नोट्स वीडियो नंबर सेवन दी फर्स्ट ऑर्गेनिज्म दैट विल स्टडी अबाउट इज दी स्टफाइलोकोकस ओरियस नाउ दिस बैक्टीरिया इज वेरी वेरी कॉमन एंड इज आस्ट अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स इन द क्रॉक सो फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू शुड नो अबाउट दिस बैक्टीरिया इज दैट दिस इज अ ग्राम पॉजिटिव बैक्टीरिया एंड इट फॉर्म्स ग्रेप लाइक क्लस्टर्स सो वेन यू लुक फॉर दिस बैक्टीरिया इन दी माइक्रोस्कोप so you will see grape like cluster formation okay forms grape like clusters the second point that you should know about this bacteria is that it is the only bacteria which is coagulase positive it is a very very important point so please remember this that this is the only bacteria which is coagulase positive The next is that it causes nosocomial infections. Now, what does it mean by nosocomial infections? Nosocomial means infections which are caused by hospital. So these are hospital acquired infections. then we should know something about its culture cultural mediums right so this bacteria can be cultured on the selective medium it can be cultured on selective medium for example on glucose peptone broth or it can be also cultured on the selective medium like milk salt or yolk salt agar now this bacteria has one more property of phage typing now what does this mean let's know but before that we should know the meaning of phages now phages is a short form for bacteriophage now this bacteriophage what does this mean bacteriophage these are viruses that infects bacteria so now we know some organism that can infect the bacteria also okay so what are those those are bacteriophages or in short term we call it as phages the next coming back to our main word that was phage typing what does this mean so phage typing it is a phenotypic method a phenotypic method that uses bacteriophage for identifying and detecting bacterial strains okay so it is a method in which we uses these bacteriophages and then we can with the help of these bacteriophages we can find out the different strains of bacteria so that's all about the staphylococcus aureus and let's move to a new point in which you should remember that if there is a patient who is a meningococcal carrier so such patients who are meningococcal carriers they can be detected by using the bacteriological research so write down this point as meningococcal carriers can be detected by bacteriological research okay now the next organism that we'll study about is the helicobacter pylori a very famous organism which is responsible for your gastric ulcers okay but before that let's know some properties of it it is a gram negative bacteria and it is curved shape okay it is motile 
that means it can locomote it can move from one place to another third point you should know is that they are micro aerophiles or they are micro aerophilic now what does this micro aerophiles mean means the organisms which require oxygen to survive okay so helicobacter pylori needs oxygen for its survival next point is a very very important point that this bacteria is catalase and urease positive okay a very important point please remember this lastly i told you in the beginning that this bacteria is very famous for causing what for causing gastric ulcer so this causes gastric ulcer so in the question if they are giving that a patient is coming to you and you have diagnosed him and found out that he is or she is having gastric ulcers then the what bacteria do you think about you should think about helicobacter pylori okay the next organism we are going to study about is the fungi now the disease caused by fungi is called as mycosis okay so you should remember the disease caused by fungi is called as mycosis this fungi can be cultured on the medium the name of the medium is very very important so please remember it is saborod agar okay the name of the medium is saborod agar and you should know how exactly this fungi looks and if it is cultured in this saborod agar it will give you sour and cream like colonies okay so you should remember uh, the characteristic feature of how a fungi looks in a saborod agar and lastly you should know that fungi shows the property of budding okay it is a characteristic features of fungi so you should remember in the question if they are mentioning the organism shows budding then you should think about fungi okay so the next organism that we will be doing is diphtheria now this organism is a very very important one from crop point of view okay so first let's know some symptoms of it how exactly will a person show a symptom if he or she is having diphtheric infection so you can see that this bacteria it forms a pseudo membrane on pharynx secondly it has a very characteristic rash that is maculopapular rash so this rash is will be visible on the patient's body third symptom is in the lung it is going to cause croupus pneumonia a type of pneumonia okay so it is responsible for causing croupus pneumonia in lungs and if we do not treat this if we still not treat this diphtheria then it will cause then it affects all other organs now by all other organs here i mean it is going to affect your cardiac system that is your heart your liver your kidney and how exactly will it affect it affects by releasing toxins okay so this affects by releasing toxic action and therefore these organs will be affected which one the heart liver and the kidney now there are some patients who can be asymptomatic carrier means they do not show symptoms although they are infected with diphtheria so how do we find them out we first we do the precipitation gel test right so if 
when we do this precipitation gel test and it comes out negative so it comes out as negative then we take the swab of the patient so we take swab from pharynx and this if comes as positive means if it shows presence of diphtheria then we are sure that the patient is having diphtheria right so precipitation gel test can come out negative so at that time you should confirm it with the swab test taken from the pharynx so such patients will be what they will be asymptomatic carriers understood so you can write it down as therefore such patients are asymptomatic carriers okay the next point that sh you should know is if diphtheria is stained by neeser it gives yellow appearance okay and if diphtheria is stained by low effluor it gives blue color appearance now this blue color appearance is because this low effluor staining contains methylene blue cuz it contains methylene blue i hope this is clear this is one of the question in crock so you should remember that if they are telling that the dif we have stained the diphtheria by neeser stain then what will be the color of its appearance then it is yellow by low effluor it will give you blue color appearance okay and lastly you should know its treatment very important isn't it so for treatment of diphtheria we give them anti toxin what do we give them anti toxin but for prophylaxis for prophylaxis we give them anatoxin what do we give them anatoxin or sometimes in the option they mention it as toxoids okay so for treatment it is anti toxin and for prophylaxis it is anatoxin or we call it as toxoid so that's it for this video i hope everything is clear thank you